Cheech with fly fish food here, and we have an awesome fly. It's tied almost purely out of this bad boy. This is a hen saddle from Whiting Farms. Super simple, anybody could do it, except for Brig, but anybody else can do it. Okay, this is a cool fly that we're gonna tie mostly out of hen saddle. So, hen saddles are great because they're super webby. Um, people have asked us to hold up the fly that we're tying before we tie it. So if we have it, sure, we'll do it. But as you can see, this has a kind of a flat style tail which, which wiggles back and forth really well. A messy body. And then also up at the head, we add a few more pieces of schlop. But this is just called a hen bugger, an articulated hen bugger. And if you haven't already, there's a fly called the just the normal hen bugger. That's a really good little stillwater fly. And, and there's a link to that as well. But on the back hook here, we've got the Foley Mill Streamer Stripper hook. It's a little bit wider gap hook. <clears throat> this one is a size six. And we're just going to dress this up. Use your favorite thread. I usually use a 140 denier. Um, just something that uh, matches up well with the color of your fly. Anyway, the back of this um, is going to be, what is it called? I don't know what this technique's called. It's just a flat feather. This is the, the way a lot of the classic overwing streamers were tied. But we're just going to take two feathers. We're going to place them back to back and I'm gonna say I want that to be about that long you see how I have those so if I just pinch that with my off hand and strip those I can cut those off now even though these are big feathers I want to wrap these and try to catch them so that when I wrap these up the shank those two feathers are gonna sit right side by side otherwise they'll kind of roll all around on you so don't worry too much about this part, but it does make for a pretty nice looking fly. And those feathers are way more durable than you'd think. Anyway, you can do two of them. You can add um, one more on each side. You can vary the colors. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with these. I'd like to take this opportunity to apologize for Brigham. <laughs> Brigham, you left the fan on and they had to listen to that blowing, so. That's, that's how it is. When I tie, I tie hot. I got to have a fan on me at all times. All right. So the rest of this fly is going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to farm out another hackle. So these whiting red labels are awesome because they have a really cool taper to them. So I'm going to take this one, tie it in by the tip, and just come back here and lash that bad boy down. This is going to be a complex twist style fly. Um, if you haven't seen that before, there's, you watch the complex twist bugger, it will show it pretty well. But this is a really cool new dubbing from Fulling Mill called Voodoo Streamer Dub. Consistency is kind of like a, a seal substitute, kind of like a semi seal, um, but really, really cool. This is a color called Dark Brown Copper UV. Yeah, all the colors you want to hear. And when you want to catch fish. So I'm going to make a dubbing loop out of this. Let's see about that long. Because I'm going to need to make sure that this feather is also this, roughly the same length as the dubbing loop. Because I'm going to twist them all up together in the end. Um, you'll see what I'm talking about. So that dubbing loop, shorter than the feather. It will also compress as I twist it up. Um... All right, now I'm just going to build up a little bit of a sparse loop. Like, very, very sparse. So you can see that hardly has any dubbing in it. And when you twist it up, it will give a really cool little effect. Okay, so we're going to twist that up. Okay, so nice and messy, just like a leech. Yes, you could wrap that and fish it just like that as a leech. So once I have that, this Smeyan um, twister, if I squeeze that together, it opens up. So I'm going to open that up and grab that feather, 
just lock that bad boy down in there and then I'll twist those up together. Not very much, that's usually all we need. So there you have it. Now we've got a kind of a fly tied already. Oh, you know what, I need to take that thread forward. And now I'll just use my rotary feature, wrap it forward and then I'll brush it back. Wiggle my thread a little bit. That will help from tying down all those gnarly fibers. And fine tip scissors, like these Renameds to get in tight. Very little waste. Get rid of that. And now I'm just going to reinforce that tie down that I just made and whip finish. All right, at this point I'll grab some Velcro and I'm going to just brush those out together. And this will help any fibers that are trapped or not facing the right direction to fall in line and get with the program. All right, so here we go. Nice little back half of a smaller articulated streamer. All right, let's get going on that front half. Oh, by the way, we'll put some super glue on this. Some people ask, why don't you ever put head cement on your flies in the videos? And just because it takes extra time. But check this out. If I if I put head cement, I can just put it over the whole eye. And then uh, grab some of these feather scraps. I guess this is another thing a, a hen hackle could be used for. So I have a little tiny tip from one of the hen hackles. I can just come up through that. That little hackle will absorb all that glue out of the eye. Bada bing, bada boom. It's almost like we designed it that way. All right, front half. <clears throat> Let's put that there for now. And we're gonna farm out a cone. Size large cone, this is a size two. So we skipped the size four, back half is a six. We skipped the four and the front side, the front is a two. All right, so it's a large um, cone head on there. I'm just gonna wrap some lead wire. Um, I don't know, you guys count and tell me, how many, tell me how many wraps of wire this is so that people can know, put it in the comments. All right, so We'll jam that bad boy up in there. I'm going to have to use my scissors to kind of push it. And I do that mostly just to keep it out of the way while we're tying the fly. <clears throat> All right. Reattach my thread. Let me see if I can get that tighter. That's how we're sitting. Okay. Reattach the thread. We're gonna come down here, and I like to wrap this a little bit further down the bend because we're gonna tie an articulation section on it. Okay, so I've wrapped this a little bit down to prevent fouling, <clears throat> and I'm just gonna get some articulation wire, and I'm gonna actually start it pretty far up here. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm coughing. <coughs> this is called Montezuma's Revenge, freaking, <laughs> monsters coming to bite me. I think these hieroglyphics on the can say, hey, do not drink this while you're doing a fly tying video because it will make you cough and Brigham will have to edit a lot. But it's got zero sugar per can. All right, so I'm just gonna wrap this wire down to where my thread ended. I'm gonna take one of the small beads. You can put a large one on there or two beads or whatever you like. <clears throat> I'll just thread that on there. Next step, thread our back section through. Thread that back through the bead. And we are in. This stuff's designed for intruders. They catch steelhead on intruders, so I'm confident. <clears throat> I'm going to leave ample space for that wire in the back of the hook. That way the that back section can flop around quite a bit. Just come back up forward. 
If you have any buddies that left their fly tying scissors on your desk, you can cut wire with those, but never cut them with your own scissors. It's really bad. So I'll, I'll wrap this up, just fold it back over on top of itself, and we'll just give that some really tight wraps. Some people say, well, you should use GSP for that. Actually, GSP is really bad for this because it's so slick. This is a nylon coated wire, and so <clears throat> you're talking about two slick surfaces rubbing against each other, and you, you had you have maybe more chances of it pulling out. That said, you're gonna probably break that long before that ever gets pulled out of there. All right, okay, more of the same for the front section. Um, so let's just get after it. For the front section, there's no tail, so we're just gonna build the body just like we did the back section. But on this hen saddle, for the, the first few feathers, I picked them uh, actually up here, so they're smaller feathers. The next feathers I'm going to choose are kind of from the middle of this cape. Let's see, the middle here. I know you can't see the whole cape, but you get the idea. So you can see that's quite a bit bigger feather. You got a little bit of two-tone in here, so it looks really cool. And I'm going to tie that one in by the tip, just like we did that back body section. And we will now build our dubbing loop that's shorter than the feather. And then we'll just wrap forward and do the same thing we did last time. By the way, I'm not showing off at all that I have one of these top or these twisters with a purple shaft. Just saying. All right, more of the same dubbing. We can get a little bit thicker with the dubbing here because we want this fly to taper up. So long, longer feather, longer uh, fibers on the feather, and a little bit thicker dubbing loop. So there we go, we'll give that a twist. And we'll brush it out just like last time, and then we'll put that feather in it. Just light twist, light pick out. If, you, if this gets too tight, it, it's more prone to break. So here we go. <clears throat> That's like five to seven twists worth. So again, just really lightly pick that out. And then I'll wrap that forward just like we did the back section. And it will look pretty gnarly because we got dubbing and feathers all twisted up and we'll brush that out. So I'm not going to wrap all the way to the cone, just as far as I can get before it really starts turning white. A little bit of extra color in there is not going to hurt anything. Tie those down and now we'll brush that section out. Okay, at this point, now I'm gonna take the hen saddle and I'm gonna pull some of the, lar the, the largest feathers off the back. <clears throat> Ooh, this one has some really nice coloration on it. So here we have this. So I am going to tie that one in by the tip and I'm just gonna load up that space. I'm gonna try to create a little bit of bulk here. So I'll take the feather um, I'm tying it in at this point because these feathers are, are already smaller than this feather here that I already tied on. So if I want to keep tapering up, I'll choose a feather or I'll choose the point in the feather that's a little bit bigger than the last one I tied in. All right. So at this point, I'm going to dang it, son of a little heavy-handed. That's all right. We'll just tie that right back in. And what I was trying to show you is I like to fold very gently the, the hen hackle and just wrap that up as the collar. Um, and if you preen this back every single time, um, it'll look super cool. And sometimes this, this will even take two feathers. Okay, I gotta clean this up here. 
feathers going every which direction. Such is the life of a hen hackle tire. And it keeps wanting to twist just because it's a hen hackle and that's kind of what they do when they're thicker. So you just really need to grab it. And if you, as you can see, I'm kind of mashing that down behind the bead. That's about as far as we're gonna go on that guy. Okay, so that lead wanted to come out the front. Goodness gracious, it wants out of there. She gone. Okay, now, if you look at this, my bead is still pretty wiggly. So like I said, we're gonna throw a second feather in there. Um, sometimes it needs a little bit more bulk to fill it up. So I'm just going to find another, you know, thick section of this feather, tie that one in. Brig, these saddles are 20 bucks, right? Correct. Yeah, that's a pretty good steal. <clears throat> All right. So again, more of the same, just jamming it under that bead, trying to keep it somewhat neat. So that's going to have a really cool profile. It's going to be a little bit denser than the rest of the fly. So it'll kind of give it that sculpin like quality. Okay, so the last step is I'm going to take some super glue and I'm going to dab it right on top of that tungsten cone. And then when I whip finish this, I'm just going to tack that thread into that super glue so you're not you know, coating your whole thread with super glue. If you do that, then you'll glue your, your whip finisher all up. But you just kind of go over the top of it, you scoot a little bit of super glue over down into the knot. Now it's right where I tied it off, and it is all set.